Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Today is the last webinar in the Wikipedia as Outreach and Activism for Canadian History webinar series. In this sp series, speakers have discussed why and how Wikipedia is used as a method of outreach and activism and why Canadian history on Wikipedia needs our attention. Today, Crystal will be giving us uh, a how-to about how to get started editing and contributing to Wikipedia. Uh, these will be some hands-on skills and skills that you can take away from today's webinar and apply to your work. My name is Jessica Knapp and I am the Online Engagement Coordinator for Canada's History Society. This webinar series is a collaboration between Canada's His History Society and the Shingwak Residential School Centre. The Shingwak Residential School Centre is a grassroots community based archive managed by Algoma University and the Children of Shingwak Alumni Association, which is a residential school survivor group. The center is dedicated to preserving the history of the Shingwak Residential School, as well as the history of residential schools across Canada, with an emphasis on telling history from the survivor and intergenerational perspective. Canada's History Society is dedicated to promoting greater popular interest in Canadian history, principally through our publishing, education, and recognition programs. And with that, I would love to introduce you to Krista. So if you have attended any of the previous webinars in this series, you would have heard from Krista already. She's been a, a fabulous co-host of the series and is completing the series by giving uh, two presentations. So last week she gave a presentation about the intro to the basics of why you might contribute to Wikipedia and, and very briefly how to get started on that and some of the nuances there. And today uh, her presentation will, I mean just as the title explains, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into what editing and contributing to Wikipedia is all about and how you will do that and, and what's important to know and what kind of knowledge you need to have to get started there. So Krista McCracken is a public history professional currently working as an archi archive supervisor at Algoma University's Arthur A. Wishart Library and Shingwak Residential School Centre. Krista lives and works on Robinson Huron Treaty Territory in Bawa Ting, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Métis people. Krista's research interests include community archives, residential schools, and educational outreach. She is a co-editor of the popular Canadian history website, activehistory.ca, which is really great. They are very timely, and they really bring quite the critical perspective to current events and draw the connections into history. So if you haven't already checked out activehistory.ca, I, I definitely encourage you to go over there. Um, so when Krista is not working, she can be found drinking tea, watching Doctor Who, and editing Wikipedia. So welcome, Krista, and I hope everybody else can uh, join me in welcoming her as well. Great. Uh, thanks for that warm welcome, Jessica, and thank you, everybody, for participating today. I'm super happy to be here and really excited that the Shingwak Residential School Center was able to partner with Candace History for this webinar. So. Today, we're really going to talk about, as Jessica mentioned, some of the more kind of nitty gritty editing basics of how to get you started on Wikipedia. So our plan for today is we're going to review some of the kind of core principles of editing Wikipedia. We're going to do a walkthrough of how to make a simple edit to existing Wikipedia articles. We're going to talk about adding citations. Uh, so. Kim, you mentioned uh, adding and integrating references relating to your collections. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about that today. Actually, one of the examples that I'm going to use in this intro part is really related to um, embedding archival citations in existing articles. Um, following that discussion around citations, we're going to do a little walkthrough of how to use the article wizard to draft your first article and then talk about some tips for how to keep learning and how to keep developing your Wikipedia skill sets. Yeah, 
Um, so just in terms of getting started, we did talk about a lot of this last week. Um, so if you haven't uh, viewed the webinar, I would encourage you to go back uh, after this and maybe take a look at some of it if you're interested in some of the broader Wikipedia editing principles and just some of the motivations for editing Wikipedia. But generally, we're just going to be keeping in mind today the kind of core principles of Wikipedia. So the idea that content on Wikipedia should be written from a neutral point of view. It should be verifiable, so we need to use citations and references. And articles should be um, about notable people, notable events, or um, notable organizations. Though, as we mentioned last week, uh, some of those criteria, such as notability and verifiability, um, can definitely be interpreted based on your background or the backgrounds of other editors. Um, so one of the things we didn't talk about last week is the idea of being bold while editing. So this is actually kind of a tagline on Wikipedia. And I think it's actually a really good tagline in terms of encouraging new editors to dive in and make those edits. I know it can be kind of scary or intimidating to get in there and feel like you have the authority over an article or to feel like you have the right or that knowledge to contribute. Um, but the principle behind Be Bold is to make edits. I mean, don't be reckless or malicious in your edits, but uh, get in there and make changes and your edit gets reverted, that's okay too. Uh, it's part of a learning process and we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go. Um, so I did suggest to folks last week that as part of getting started, uh, you create an account on Wikipedia. I, I do strongly recommend that. It is possible to edit Wikipedia without creating an account. Um, however, some of that functionality, like in terms of being able to upload an image, and stuff like that doesn't exist unless you create an account. Um, when you're setting up to start editing Wikipedia, I find it's often helpful to have a few different windows open up on your laptop, or if you uh, use a desktop on the multiple screens you might have set up. Um, and one of the things that's helpful often to have up is the Wikipedia cheat sheet and the uh, manual of style guides for Wikipedia. Um, especially when you're still learning, if you're looking at using source code or anything, it's really helpful to have that material easily accessible and so you can just tab between windows and find that content. Um, so actually the screenshot on this particular slide is from the Wikipedia cheat sheet, just to give you kind of an idea of some of the stuff it covers. So it covers formatting for like how to make things bold. Um, what citations or formatting you need to insert references into Wikipedia and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to provide a quick example of citation building before we go into a step-by-step -step walkthrough. Uh, so the example I'm using is um, from an existing Wikipedia article on basal age Johnson. Uh, this article was actually put together by a colleague of mine, uh, Danielle Robichaud, um, another great archivist and really avid user of Wikipedia. Um, and she did this as part of her work as the Wikipedia, Wikipedian in residence at McMaster University. Um, so I know the screenshot's a little tricky to see, but in the the biography paragraph talking about Basil and uh, Basil Johnson. His correspondence has actually been donated to McMaster University Library. And there was a newspaper article published about this donation. So one of the citations actually links directly to that article. And there are a couple embedded um, citations in the overall Wikipedia page that link back to McMaster's collection. Uh, similarly, the external links section includes a direct link to the fall level description uh, for Johnston's collection. Um, so this is one way of being able to insert those archival links and kind of build those 
uh, collection links on Wikipedia without directly promoting your archives or your heritage organization. So instead of just simply creating a page about the McMaster University Library, which does also exist, but um, it's kind of a sneaky way of promoting your organization, but also really contributing to knowledge building and broader themes of Canadian history on Wikipedia. Um, so as we're going along today, we're going to talk a little bit also about some citation templates. So we did talk last week about the fact that there is a specific um, citation template for citing archival material. So that is one way that you can enter information into a Wikipedia article and making sure that it's properly attributed to the archival holdings that it came from. Um, but there's also other common citations that are used, like uh, CiteWeb or CiteBook, that really allow you to link to uh, secondary sources, which are really the foundation of uh, references on Wikipedia. Though the Site Archive template is available now, um, the foundation of Wikipedia is still secondary source research, and they really do discourage orig original research as kind of the foundation of an article. So you can definitely enter your archival citations in, but those do need to be supplemented by other sources that are available online. Okay, So to kind of move into some of those nitty-gritty technical skills or how-to skills, uh, we're going to shift modes a little bit, and I'm going to share my screen with you guys. So you, I'll walk through some of the edits, and we can do this together. So just bear with us a second as we shift the technical mode in Adobe. Great. All right. Um, so just kind of as a couple reminders as we're getting started with uh, Wikipedia, if you haven't created an account, it would be in the top right-hand corner up here. And a couple of other helpful features to remember is there is a very vibrant help community and how-to pages on Wikipedia. So if you're not sure how to do something, you can always tab over to the help uh, guidelines that are over on the left-hand side. So to start off, um, I actually decided we're going to do some editing on Canada's National History Society Wikipedia page for today. Um, so this is a fairly standard organizational uh, Wikipedia page. It's kind of middle of the ground uh, in terms of its content. So I thought it would kind of be a good basic place for us to start. So to start off, I'm just going to do a couple simple edits. Um, so for example, HBC here should be in all caps. So we're going to go in and we're going to fix that. So this is a very basic level edit. Um, I clicked on the top here and clicked Edit Source. So you can see it brings you into um, the more technical source-based editor here. And for simple edits, it's very easy to use. Um, it's really just like a text editor. Um, so we're going in. I'm going to make the B and the C in HBC capital. I see a couple other instances of that. So I'm going to fix that as well. So I'm really just deleting the existing content and replacing it with new content. So really simple and kind of the easiest form of editing. You've made your changes. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select this was a minor edit because really we were just changing some capitalization. And make a note of what I did. To HBC and then save changes. So we can see that it's changed on the article and that they have taken effect already. Um, so when I clicked edit source, it did bring us into the source editor. Um, we talked a little bit last week about the differences between the visual editor and the source level editor. Um, and it really depends on your comfort level and what you prefer to use. So 
my account is actually defaulted to go to the source editor, but you can set it up so that it defaults to use the visual editor. If you would like to switch between the two types of editors, uh, you just need to click on the little kind of pencil that's over in the right hand side and it'll drop down a tab that says visual editing and source editing. So I'm going to switch to visual editing so I can show you how that will work. Again, this is if you're making simple kind of grammar edits or content-based edits, the visual editor is really easy to use. It basically works like a word processing program or it's a commonly known as a WYSIWYG editor. So what you see is what you get is what WYSIWYG stands for. Um, so if there was other typos that I wanted to fix, um, I could enter that here. So for example, if I wanted to change the numeric six to a written out six, I could do that. And again, very simple, just going through and um, typing in any changes I want to see. If I wanted to see something bolded, you could simply just highlight it and then use the drop down and pick if you want it in bold or italic, for example. Okay. And to save your changes, again, just go to the top, click Save Changes, and the very similar box will pop up. It says Describe what you changed, um, and you can hit Save Changes. If you want to see what your changes will look like before they are enacted, which if you're making substantial changes, I would suggest doing this, you can just hit Review Your Changes, and it will show you what the article looked like um, before you made your edit and after the edit. Um, this, also, this option is also available in the source editor, um, and it's a good way to check if your code is working correctly or not. You can see what it would look like visually versus the text. Did okay. Um, so that is kind of the most basic level of a simple edit. So what I'm going to show you guys next is how to add a citation. Next, so I kind of I peeked ahead a little bit and looked through and looked up some citations for um, the kind of Candace History magazine section that's listed here. Um, so there's actually no citations in that section at all around the publication. So if you are on the source editor, uh, and sorry, the visual editor page, you have a couple couple different options in terms of how to create to add a citation section. So you can see along, I peeked the top menu bar here, there is an option that says cite. You can just click on it and you get a little box that pops up. And so the add a citation option has three tabs. So automatic, manual, and reuse. So reuse actually lets you, if you've already created a citation, uh, say to a book or a news article say to, uh, that you would like to reference again, you can simply just click on reuse. So reuse. Um, it's a really great time saver if you're doing a lot longer article where you're continually referencing a couple of sources. Um, the automatic option is if you have a web, like a URL or an ISBN number, for example, Wikipedia has the ability to auto-generate some of those. So I'm just going to pull up a, uh, a web link that I had pulled earlier and see if this one will auto-generate for us. Okay. So I just stated dropped in, uh, in a, a URL to a New York Times article and it has auto-generated it but I can see there's actually a little bit of an error message that it's throwing but you can look into that. So basically it's submit. It has created a citation for us um, which is really convenient. Um, but if you hit edit, so if you notice either uh, there's information missing or there's an error. 
can always hit edit and it will take you directly into the citation template. And this is where you can change any of the information or add additional information that wasn't picked up when uh, you did the auto-generate. Okay. So that is the kind of most basic way to add a citation. Um, but like all things that are kind of internet-based or uh, machine-based, the auto-generate function doesn't always work for every URL. So I'm going to show you how to manually enter something into the uh, citation template, and then I'm also going to show you how to code something on the back side so that you have kind of the range of options for building your own citations. So I'm just going to pull up my little word pad that has the citations that I looked up earlier. Okay. So this actually just happened uh, last month. I'm going to add another sentence saying in 2017, Candace History released an archive of the back catalog of the Beaver Magazine and Candace History Magazine. And then I'm going to take the URL and we're going to add that in. So go back up to the top tab that allows us to hit the citation button. And this time we're going to do manually to add it. So this is a website citation. I'm going to add in the URL. Um, I know the title of the article is actually what is in the URL listing. So I'm going to manually type that in. So Candace History Archive launched in celebration of Canada Day. So this is kind of where it comes in handy to have multiple tabs open at once. So you can check um, information around what website this came off of, who wrote the article, and the date of the article. So I'm just going to open the article in another tab. So in this case, I'm just scrolling down, it actually looks like this was a press release, so there's no um, kind of author associated with it, which is totally fine. You can skip those fields on Wikipedia. And it has the date listed as June 22nd, 2017. Okay, let's go back to the page that we were editing. Add the source date in, and the website was Newswire. If this was a, say, an archived newspaper clipping, you could add in the URL here, or if it was a dead link, you could add in that URL in the dead URL um, option. And the access date is just when you, as an individual, looked at this article last. So, oh, it's August. So I'm going to add in August 2nd, 2017. There are also um, options here to add more information. So, for example, if you know there was a specific publisher, or if there was multiple authors of the article you're trying to create a citation for, you do have the option of adding that in as well. I'm just going to hit Insert. And we've created another citation here. Oh, except I totally created that in the wrong spot. So the joys of uh, doing a live demo. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Cite, Reuse, pick the second citation. So that's the one we just created. And then delete the one that was entered in, in the wrong location. So. Um, I'm showing you two ways of how to create citations, and now I'm just going to show you how to add one um, kind of using the source code options. So this is more, um, if you're more comfortable using wiki markup or a programming language, um, I would suggest using the source editor. Um, additionally, as you become more comfortable with Wikipedia as a platform, the source editor allows for um, additional functionality that the visual editor does not. 
So I would suggest um, trying it out from time to time as you get more comfortable. So I clicked on the little pencil again and I'm going to switch to source editing. So you can already see the edits that I've made. If we go in, I'm just going to scroll down to the area we were working in. You can actually see the citation that I created um, using the visual editor has been added in. I just highlighted it um, so you can see what it looks like when it's created. Um, so this is kind of the point where I said it's really handy to have multiple windows open at the same time, um, especially if you're just learning and trying to figure out how to format citations. It's helpful to have the citation templates open at the same time. Um, so I know Jessica dropped the links into SiteWeb and SiteBook earlier into the chat box. This is the SiteWeb template. And really what I would suggest doing is just uh, copying that in to the code directly and then filling in like what is the URL, what is the article or the title of the article, who wrote it, the last and first, the date of it published. So you're still filling in the exact same fields as in the visual editor. Um, the only difference is um, the way that those fields are displaying. It's more kind of traditional um, markup code versus a nice visual box that you're entering things into. Um, the only other thing with adding references is you need to add a reference tag. So this is what the beginning of a reference tag looks like. So ref and then the close tag for a reference is ref the slash in front of it. So I actually um, went ahead and prepared one additional citation that we're just going to drop in. So we can I can show you that it does work when you fill out the template. So again, all I did was pull the URL, the title of the article, who wrote it, and the date and the website information. So I'm going to add the citation right beside the one that we just entered. So I'll add my ref tag, drop in the citation, and then add the closing reference tag. Okay, and that should be it. So I'm going to go to the edit summary and then click to added citations to magazine section. Okay, I'm going to show a preview so we can see that it, um, if the citation worked or not. Yep, if we look here, the both citations that we've created are there. We can see them and they're not throwing any errors. Um, if an error had happened, they would come up in bright red here. Okay. Yep. And so my edit is saved and it's now part of this Wikipedia article. Um, the one other place that I would suggest in terms of building citations and building references that information can be added is particularly in um, articles about authors or uh, for the case of Canada's history books they've published is creating um, references that are formatted correctly um, and adding those into the articles. So you can see there's two different styles here. The bottom two uh, books that are listed in this section are actually formatted correctly, whereas the ones above it um, could have more information added to them. So just briefly show you how you can easily kind of fix some of that for formatting and add in more information. So I'm going to switch to the visual editor for this example, uh, just so you can see clearly the different boxes and uh, different places um, that the templates can be used. So if we wanted to add a citation for the 100 photos that changed Canada publication, we could go up to the insert tab 
here and then click on template. So the add a, a template drop down tab, it basically works as a, a search field. So there's templates for pretty much any type of citation or reference that you can think of on Wikipedia. Um, and typically you just have to type cite and then you can see the list of them. And I would click cite book in this instance and then hit add template. And as you can see it looks really similar to the citation we just did but it's specific to the book. Um, and you could just enter in the title, uh, author name, publisher, year of publication, and the ISBN number, and then it would format that nice um, citation for you, and so it would match the other ones that are already in the list. Um, for the case of the books published by Candace History Society, I know in many cases uh, there's actually an editor for those publications. So the auto-generated fields on Wikipedia don't include an editor field. Um, so you would have to go to add more information and then type in editor and it would let you add an additional field so you could add that information into the citation you were building. Um, so it's kind of a quick overview of how to add citations into a Wikipedia article and I'm happy to talk more about specifics during the question answer answer period if you have specific questions about building um, new citations or using different types of information like newspaper articles or journals and things like that. Um, so we're just going to switch gears very briefly to talk about, um, so once you've done a few edits to existing pages, you're kind of getting a feel for what editing Wikipedia is like and really excited and you want to create your first article about something. Um, so I would suggest for your first article that you use the Wikipedia article wizard. Um, and to access the wizard, you can actually just type in article wizard and search Wikipedia and this page will come up. So the article wizard really um, walks you through step by step to make sure that your article is suitable and that the topic you've picked is one that um, fits all Wikipedia's requirements. It also has handy links to help pages so that if you're just learning how to edit, it gives you suggestions of things to read about before kind of diving off into the deep end and getting really frustrated with trying to create something from scratch. So we're going to say that we've learned a bit about editing and uh, edited articles ourselves, and that we want to write an article. Click it. So, is there article? Is there already an article in existence? Um, so, one of the things on Wikipedia, because there is so many articles, um, you really want to make sure that a, the subject that you're thinking of hasn't already been covered or that it hasn't been covered using an alternative title. Um, so, this is the place where if you're unsure if an article has been created or not, you can type in a topic and see if something comes up. So I'm interested in creating a Wikipedia page about Project of Heart, which is a, um, a grassroots kind of community-based education tool uh, around reconciliation in residential schools. Looking, and it doesn't look like it has been created already. So no, my proposed article doesn't exist on Wikipedia. Is the subject suitable for Wikipedia? So this goes back to those principles of notability, of um, neutrality, and uh, conflict of interest that we were talking about earlier. So I'm writing an article about a company, an organization, or a foundation. So you have to then go through um, another set of questions to make sure that it's about a notable company, that it's not advertising, and that you don't necessarily have a conflict of interest. Right? 
do you have good sources about this article? So whatever topic you're dealing with, I would suggest um, gathering all your sources beforehand as the little kind of source example box points out. So books, newspaper articles, academic journals are considered good sources. MySpace pages are not good sources, which I don't even know if those exist anymore. Um, <laughs> blogs aren't considered good sources typically, um, or personal knowledge. Basically, you can't just write something because you know it. It has to have some type of um, written documentation around it. So my proposed article has good sources. All right, so talking about content. So here is just some um, reminders about Wikipedia's guidelines. So um, despite some of the claims that, you know, Wikipedia is not a good source, they're actually really strict about copyright and about making sure that um, articles meet their criteria. And so this is the place where you can think about if whether or not you're the right person to write this article. Do you have enough information to put together a solid article that um, meets the style standards. And if so, you can hit my submission is neutral and I'm not copying and paste it, it from the internet. Okay, so then you basically get to the end of the article wizard and you're ready to create it. So, you have a couple options here. You can create an article in the draft space, or you can create it directly in the name space. So I would always suggest creating it in the draft space first, um, especially as a new user. It's really handy to have it in a draft space so you can start working on it, maybe go away, and then come back to it. Um, kind of give yourself the room to take a break from it, but also it gives you the protection of folks usually won't go in and delete a draft. So you have more time to develop the content around it and also get feedback from other users. And so really all you need to do to create the article is type in the title of what you would like it to be called, hit create a new article draft, and there you go. We're into an article draft. And we can see that a few things are auto-generated. There's also some instructions to uh, kind of guide you on how to create the article. And you can see that it's auto-generated with um, a tag that's declaring that this is a draft and a reference section. Um, and so this is also the space where you can decide how you want to approach editing it. You can um, use the source-based editor, which is what has pulled up on this, or you can go over here and click switch editor and switch to visual editing. Okay. All right. And again, if you want to switch back, you can do that as well. And so this is, is the space that you would really go and start basically writing your article. Um, so one of the things I have suggested in the past is actually starting to write out the basis of your article in, say, a word processor or another um, kind of space before getting started. So you're not doing all that research as you're trying to fit it into Wikipedia standards. So I went ahead and did a little bit of background uh, digging on Project of Heart and have written up just a tiny little bit about it that I can paste into the draft space to get us started. Um, that's filled with typos as well, but uh, that's totally okay. Um, so when we're working with this, um, so I went in and I created just kind of the basic narrative of how I see this article developing. Uh, I've also created a few headings, which we can then uh, use the formatting of the WYSIWYG editor to actually make um, into real headings so that it's easier to navigate. Yeah, um, but this kind of gives you an idea of the fact that despite this seeming like this 
really long process to get an article written and up, like to get a stub article written, it doesn't necessarily have to be this monumental undertaking and there's little steps you can do along the way to make it a bit easier on yourself before tackling it. Um, so if I was spending a little bit more time with this, I've already pulled in some citations and I would go through and add those into the various sections uh, so that then this would be a verifiable article as well. So I'm just going to save this and say that I've created a draft page. Yeah. And when you are working with a draft, um, you do have the option of just saving it as a draft and coming back to it multiple times to keep working on it. And when you're happy with your draft, then you can submit it for review and it'll go out to the Wikipedia community as a whole. Um, so there is kind of that buffer period there to let you work on it at your own pace. So, you know, if you only have an hour or so, you can work on it for a little bit and then come back to it another day. Um, yes, yeah, so there's lots of options around creating that page. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of summarizes some of the basic points that I was hoping to cover today. So I'm going to stop the screen share and uh, turn things over to Jessica to kind of moderate the Q&A period. Thank you, Krista. I am so surprised. I shouldn't be, but that was very cool to see Canada's History's Wikipedia page being edited right before our eyes and then a project of heart to getting that started which um, for those of you who weren't with us last week Sylvia Smith was with us and we talked about how no page existed for it so that is it's very cool from one week to the next to see that kind of action um, and, and that work being done I did tweet at Sylvia during today's webinar, so she knows that that is happening and that now she has a space to contribute to, which is very cool. Um, I do welcome everybody who is here listening to ask any questions they might have about the process. We do already have one from Kim that was asked earlier on, uh, Krista, and she asks, Kim asks, excuse me, if you select the watch this page box, will you be notified if future edits are made? So the watch this page box did appear when you were making changes and then you were describing in the space where you were describing what kind of changes you made. There are two check boxes and one of them was watch this page. Yeah, um, so that option is really only available if you have signed in as a user to Wikipedia and then if you click watch this page, um, there's a little notification tab that will appear at the top right of your Wikipedia kind of page whenever you're on that website and it has the notifications icon. So it will let you know when other editors have made suggestions to that page or reviewed it. Um, not necessarily every tiny, minute page, but really um, if there's been substantial edits or if someone has flagged a problem with that page, it will let you know. So I have a few questions, um, but I will give the floor to Anna. Anna asks, for clarification, the site archive template is not integrated into main editing suite. Um. Yeah, <laughs> so the site archive template is still relatively new on Wikipedia and I know um, there have been kind of discussions around whether or not it um, should be edited like from the drop down. There's a couple different ways you can access it. You can use the uh, source based editor, um, but when I was talking about how to add book references, if you go to the insert tab in the visual editor and then template, you can type in site archive and it'll come up there. Um, so you can still use it in the visual editor. It's just um, a little trickier and to follow, get to than if followed you followed up with how do we advocate for making the site archive more official or user friendly? Um, so I think part of that is just getting more people to use it. Uh, the more frequently a template is used, the more discussion there is around it. Um, and I know even the template was created 
by a U.S. user, and so there's some substantial differences sometimes between how U.S. archives are organized versus Canadian archives. Um, and the full site archive template is actually huge, and they have a more basic one that I tend to use because it includes kind of your full level, your series level, um, accession numbers, and links, which kind of the core information. But the larger one includes a ton of tangential information that might not apply to every archive. But yeah, again, uh, I really think um, the more people who are using it or uh, sharing on the talk pages of the site archive template is one way to also have some discussion Thank you. around future iterations. So I, you showed us two different types of editors today, the visual editor and the source editor. Um, which one do you recommend people start using? Um, so I really think it depends on the individual. If you have experience, um, say, editing a source on a website or using the source editor on uh, WordPress or something similar, using the source editor on Wikipedia probably won't be too big of a jump. If the idea of editing code scares the bejesus out of you, um, feel free to stick with the visual editor initially and slowly maybe start doing those simple edits in the source-based editor as a kind of a first stepping stone. Um, one great thing about Wikipedia is both processes are really well documented. Um, and if you aren't sure how to do something in either editor, you can always Google it or a look quick follow it up to that. Is there lines. anything so really you can't do with the, with the visual editor that you can do with the source editor or vice versa? Like major things that you would have come across of? Um, so the main thing you can't do with the visual editor that you can do in the source editor is you can't edit talk pages. Um, so talk pages exist for um, every Wikipedia article or have the option of being created for every Wikipedia article. And they're places where editors can kind of talk amongst themselves about the article or ask for help with. And currently, the visual editor doesn't do a good job of editing those pages at all. Um, that being said, since these pages are mostly talk pages, oh. Using the source editor in it, okay, it's perfect. usually that you're just typing a comment. Pretty simple then. Like so um, Jay asks very, if you have any right. advice on how kind of one's own me. institutional wiki entry can be improved in the face of conflict of interest. Yeah, definitely. Um, so one thing I would encourage folks to do is as you create your Wikipedia account is if you have a conflict of interest um, or if you know a lot of the editing you're going to be doing is from an institutional perspective or um, is really motivated by something unique to your position, declare that on your user page. Um, so my user page has a, a statement basically saying that I work at Algoma University um, in the Shingwak Residential School Center and that um, though I do edit articles relating to the history of residential school, that I am really open to other people um, looking at my edits, changing my edits, um, and that I will personally try and adhere to the conflict of interest policy. Um, so it's OK to edit your own institutional wiki page. Um, I would just suggest that you're careful with the language that you use. Um, you're looking for sources that are outside of your own institution. So in the cases of heritage institutions, I would suggest not heavily using your own website as a source, but really looking at um, if there have been newspaper articles about your institution or about exhibits or particular um, holdings within your institution, that you use those as kind of the grounding points for your articles. Um, and then draw in, say, your finding aids and things like that as kind of supplementary. Places. Excellent. Kind so of we are about to wrap up. We have about five minutes left today's webinar. So anybody who is here in the room with us, if you have any last questions, now is a great time to ask them. I will ask a, a final question from me, anyways. Um, what are the common challenges faced? 
sorry, excuse me, what are the common challenges that face new editors, and do you have suggestions for how to overcome those challenges? Um, so I think one of the challenges that a lot of new editors face is um, becoming discouraged quickly, particularly if, say, you create a page and then about a topic that you're really emotionally invested in, and then that page is flagged or even probably um, potentially slated for deletion. Um, so I think one of the things that can help with that is by kind of getting started with some of those smaller edits first to skill build, but then also working to build yourself um, like a Wikipedia editing community. So connecting with other editors um, who have like interests to you, maybe looking for somebody locally who's willing to work with you as you're learning Wikipedia skills, um, or connecting virtually with someone to be like, oh, I'm interested in writing this um, article and I've drafted it, can you take a look at it? Or similarly, if you do face um, things getting, your edits being reverted, really using that as a teaching moment and using it as an opportunity to dig a little bit more into Wikipedia's policies and understanding why that edit might have been reverted. Yeah, so just, I'd say stick it out a little longer, even if you do have a little rope bumps. Um, so I think sometimes editors do get discouraged initially. And for me personally, what helped getting over that was having like-minded editors. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Krista. That kind of chat um, with Krista has mentioned a number of times that the Wikipedia editor community is quite strong, and they're always there to ask questions and help support you. Um, if you are interested, I'm sure Krista would um, be fine with being tweeted at. If you have questions about Wikipedia, would you want to, con do you want to confirm, Krista, yay or nay? <laughs> Bit awkward putting you on the spot there, but so tweet at Krista <laughs> if you have questions. If you tweet yeah, at me, I mean, <laughs> we're not going to get anywhere fast because I'm going to have to learn it just as slowly as you would have done by yourself, so that's your warning. Um, so with that, I'd like to say thank you, Krista, so much for giving us that walkthrough. Uh, I definitely have a, my head in a better space at, because I've seen it, right? I've seen you move around in the back end of Wikipedia, which is not typically something most people get to see uh, from the, of the websites that they visit day to day. Today, um, I know I, I do for Canada's history. Uh, I work in the back end of the website there, but it looks a lot different than the back end of Wikipedia. So that was really great to see, and I'm sure we all appreciated that. I'd also like to thank everybody for being here for the last webinar of the Wikipedia uh, as Outreach and Activism for Canadian History webinar series. This was a, a big test for us, to hosting a webinar series during the summer uh, and doing a four-part back-to-back-to-back-to-back series. Um, and I think we've had some great success and definitely learned some new skills. I'd also like to thank the Shingwak Residential School Center for being a partner on this webinar series. It's always great to share well, the responsibility of putting it together and identifying speakers, but it's also great to have voices in tandem as speaking to the topics that we are discussing. I think it makes for a much more enjoyable viewing experience, both live and, and in the recordings, um, and also go, goes to strengthen the relationships within the heritage community. So uh, I'm really really grateful to Krista and the Shingwak Residential Schools for being a part of this. Um, so with that, I'd like to just ask everybody to have a wonderful afternoon, and thank you for being here. Krista, did you want to say a few words? Just thank you so much, Jessica, for inviting me and the Shingwak Residential School Center to be part of this. It's been a really great experience, and thank you everybody who participated in this webinar and the rest of the series. It's been uh, interesting for webinars and I think it uh, was sort of something very cool and I'm definitely always happy to talk about uh, Wikipedia, Canadian history and the connection between archives and GLAM institutions at Wikipedia. So yeah, thanks again everybody.